Hi, Josh Carr here with another one of my cases. Uh, today we're going to talk about Purple Partners. Purple Partners is a development deal, and I don't think on this channel we've done a development deal yet, so I thought this would be a fun one. Uh, so let's get going. According to this, uh, Francois Tower is a Class C office building. It's gentrifying. We want to buy it. We want to put in resi and commercial use. Uh, it's got hard costs, it's got soft, soft costs, there's a bunch of info here about construction, and the goal is, when all is said and done, to come up with some sort of value for it. So we're going to have to do a construction piece, we're going to have to do a cash flow piece, we're going to have to consolidate it, and then we're going to have to figure out what we would buy the land for in order to get to a 20% rate of return. Assumedly, that's what we're trying to back into. Uh, so let's uh, start doing stuff. Okay, so first off, just some basic info. Uh, if you're into this sort of stuff, you can check out my website at carrealestate.com, and you can always email me with questions, ideas for models, ideas for cases at josh at carrealestate.com. Okay, so some basic info. According to this, it's 150,000 feet. Uh, we're gonna build uh, units here of 250. And we're going to build the square feet is going to be 15,000 feet of retail. So at the risk of staying the obvious, that means, according to this, the apartments are going to be, uh, well, we're going to do 250 units. Okay, fine. Well, we're demoing it, so I'm not going to worry about uh, what, what the square footage is going to be. It's just simply saying it's going to be 1,000 feet per unit. So if it's a thousand feet per unit, that means we're going to be doing 250,000 feet. So that's my residential. Okay. So that's my, my residential. My units is 250. My square feet is 250. Awesome. And there's no conversation here about usable versus rentable. So we're just going to pretend that, you know, the 1,000 feet includes the usable amount. Just make it easy. And again, you know, when we talk about usable versus rentable, we mean like, uh, you know, like what is there for common hallways? What is there for elevators? What's the space tenants are actually occupying? You get the idea. In any event, the total square footage then of the new development is going to be, unless I'm missing something here, 15,000 plus 250. Um that's going to be the new project, right? And actually, the old square footage, then it looks like it doesn't matter because we're going to demolish it. So I'm just going to delete that because I don't want to confuse ourselves. Okay, fine. So, you know, cleaning it up a little as I go. Again, I'm going through this for the first time here. So, you know, if some changes are being made live, uh, it, is, it is what it is. Hard cost, soft cost, and we're going to need a line for land. And I'll type that out, hard cost, soft cost, land. Hard cost is 200, land is soft is 30, land is right now zero. If the square footage is 265 of what we're building, then, you know, that's what we're spending to build it. It's millions of dollars, 53 million for the hard, seven, nine for the soft. Land, again, we have zeroed out. We're not going to worry about that right now. That's just going to be zero, right? Fine. Okay. Uh, it says here the residential submarket is going to be 95% occupied. So, in other words, the vacancy rate will be 5%. Uh, the rents are 240 per foot per month. Rents, rents, resi, retail. Uh, if this is 240 per foot per month, then that's going to be, that's the annual, um, you know, that's dollar per foot per year. It doesn't say what the deal of OPEX is and retail, but I'm, I'm sure that those are annual numbers just because there's no way it's Eight dollars, well, you know, like thirty-five dollars a foot net. There, it's got to be thirty-five per year, not thirty-five per month. So that's going to be retail. Okay. Awesome. 
And then op X is going to be 875, oopsie, sorry, 875. Uh, and then we have growth of 3%. We have inflation of 3%. I'm going to be sloppy about it and just grow everything in 3%. I'm not going to worry about having one line for rent and one for expenses. And then there's a 12-month lease-up period. Okay. Um, pretty simple. Okay, so first off, let's figure out the cost of construction and sort of model that out. We're going to put in a construction loan. We're going to go from there. So let's do the construction loan first. According to this... The construction loan is going to be 70% loan to cost, and the rate is going to be LIBOR plus 3%. So I'm going to put in 3.0% is the margin over LIBOR. In other words, um, you know, what's the, um, how much over that base rate is the interest rate going to be? And it doesn't say anything about permanent financing, so it looks like what they're going to do is just basically, once it's up and the cash flows are stabilized, they're just going to sell it. That's what it looks like. So there's no refinancing assumptions. That means also, I'm assuming, the construction loan will go through um, the lease-up period. So the construction loan is not just for building it, it's also for some period of holding it. And it says the investment period is three years. So if I were a betting man, uh, well, it actually tells you, it says construction is going to take two years, and then I guess it's going to take a year to lease, so we're in it for three years. If we're capping the value, we're going to have to use year four's income. So basically, we're going to figure out the NOI for year four, and we're going to use that to back into the sale price at the end of year three. Okay. And it also says it looks like this loan is going to be over the entire three years, both the two years of construction and also the one year of leasing. So let's build a schedule. The first thing we need is some sort of construction schedule. So I'm going to have schedule of construction. And we know in this case that the whole construction schedule is going to be these two numbers, right? So I'm going to say that this plus this is the hard cost and soft cost, right? That's my development cost. That's what I'm spending to build it. Now, if I have some period of time, say, I don't know, one, two, three, four. Let me drag that down a bit. And we know that we're going to end up with $60 million and it's going to be over that smooth period of time. Then what I could do is I could say, well, if that's what we're going to end with, the amount of money we've spent in total, then basically I could take this, divide by 23, right? And I could say that's what I start with. Or sorry, this by 24. And then if I just do that, plus, again, this divided by 24, you know, it's just going to sort of go up from there, right? So if I just do that, we should see that, okay, but here, hold on. Sorry. Don't mean to make a circular loop. There it is. It starts with that amount. It ends with $60 million. That's how much we're spending, right? So that's what the balance is that we're going to do for construction schedule. Basically, it's going to be this amount per month, right? So this is going to be basically, if you think about it, if I make move this over a little bit, that's going to be the total and the dollars per month that we're going to spend is going to be that amount, right? That's what we're spending per month. Great. Now we're financing 70% of that. And it doesn't say 70% of <coughs> just hard. It's saying 70 of hard and soft. 
Okay, so now we need a loan schedule. So at the beginning, there's no balance, fine. Uh, again, it's going to be, say, over, you know, 24 months. We got to figure out the draw. We got to figure out the interest. And we've got to figure out the total draw. And we need the payments and the balance. So every month, we need 70% of that amount of money. So that times 70%. That's the draw. That's going to get dragged down. That's my draw. The total draw is going to be the draw plus the interest. The balance is going to be whatever the total draw is. And in month two, it's going to be the balance of last month plus the draw of this month. And there's no intermediate payments. I have that line, that column there, but in the real world, you know, I, I don't really need to worry about it in this case. I mean, there are no intermediate payments, just the balance is getting bigger. And what's the interest? Well, the interest, it says, it starts at a quarter point. So the interest rate starts at one point, quarter point. And it ends at 1.75%. That's LIBOR. And it's going to go up over time. And then also as it goes up over time, the interest is going to adjust and, you know, it's going to affect what the, what the total draw is. Um, but before we get into that, I think this is a good natural place to take a break. Let's take a break and then we can do another video. Um, Again, uh, I hope you're enjoying this and you find this series of videos useful. Uh, please check out my website for more content. And until I see you next time, keep building better models. Thank you.